What's up everyone? Over the past few months, I've been working on a response to Rationality Rules, who claims he's debunked the argument for miracles. The link to the full playlist is in the description, but this is the third and hopefully final part. So let's get into it. The last aspect of miracles we'll briefly cover is the low-hanging but incredibly popular fruit that is faith healers, or more accurately, reprehensible charlatans. To do this, I'm going to show you a clip from Darren Brown's Miracles for Sale, which is a fantastic show that I highly recommend. If you are Indian, you are hard of hearing, I want you to come up here. You, come here. This man says he's partially deaf in one ear, which Pastor Sean is quick to express as a more major affliction. You can't hear nothing. Oh my God. Somebody shot! Be open! Be open! After the healing moment, it seems as if something miraculous has occurred. To prove the man's deaf ear had been healed, Pastor Sean had him face away so he couldn't lip read and had his assistant block his good ear. But from this camera angle, you can see that the man's good ear isn't being blocked at all. So maybe it's not such a miracle. Now the point of me showing you this clip is to predominantly point out two additional fallacies that are rampant in miraculous claims. Before we get into the fallacies that Stephen claims come from the argument for miracles, I just want to bring up that in this clip, Stephen doesn't address any sort of the serious form of the argument for miracles that we see in academia. He brings up this healing video, which I would agree probably isn't a miracle, at least in the sense that we defined in part one of this video. The issue is Stephen is misrepresenting the types of miracles that theists use when bringing up the argument for miracles in academic circles. When scholars bring up the argument for miracles, they typically give examples from peer-reviewed literature. Take this one example here. A uh, link to the full article is in the description as well. In this peer-reviewed study, a 23-year-old male had dealt with cramping and vomiting in his entire life since he was about one week old and was diagnosed with gastroparesis, a chronic lifelong condition. In November of 2011, he experienced PIP, also known as Proximal Intercessory Prayer, from an evangelist who had a similar life story as this male. Uh, a proximal intercessory prayer is a, basically just a prayer where you lay your hands on somebody. So this evangelist prayed for a healing miracle. This boy experienced a shock in his body. And that night, he ate a meal for the first time without any sort of complication. According to the journal authors, this kind of sudden recovery from his condition is unique among people who have this kind of issue. One quote from the journal says, For 16 years, the patient was totally dependent on J2 feedings and could not tolerate any form of oral feeding. After receiving PIP, proximal intercessory prayer, his intolerance to oral feedings was completely resolved. He was able to tolerate oral feedings and was completely taken off of the J2 feedings one month after the PIP experience. If there was just one account like this in scholarly literature, sure, maybe it would just be some sort of a fluke. But we see a similar thing happen consistently throughout the scientific literature. Dr. Craig Kingner has a two-volume work that shows that miracles do in fact happen. All throughout scientific literature, these events seem to be taking place, and they seem an awful lot like miracles. The first is the appeal to emotion fallacy which occurs when Pastor Sean manipulates both the recipients and the crowd's emotions by shouting and invoking their deeply held beliefs. Stephen is very right that in this particular instance, there could be an appeal to emotion fallacy happen. In fact, he probably is right, but he indirectly commits a generalization fallacy in this response. A hasty generalization occurs when you examine one or a few samples and generalize that to represent a whole class of a phenomenon. In his video, Stephen picks an easy case to pick apart when someone not in an academic circle tries to show that a miracle has happened. But Stephen doesn't, in any sense of the imagination, dive into the scholarly literature from a theistic side in this video. He doesn't address any sort of the alleged miracles that scholars will bring up when arguing for miracles. And the second is the anecdotal fallacy 
which occurs after the show when a crowd member asserts that they witnessed a miracle when they didn't. The charlatan simply lied about the extent of the recipient's condition and then presented evidence of things that the recipient could already do as if he couldn't. Again, Stephen is right here. But just because this fallacy happens in one particular instance doesn't mean that the whole argument for miracles is debunked. It just provides evidence for one particular case. So, to wrap up, I just want to say that the argument for miracles is nowhere close to being debunked. Like, just like, no, we're not close. If you, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Uh, that's it for now, guys. This is it here in Apologetics. I'm Zach. I'll see you next time.